And now we move on to Paul Moulton from Isle of Man Television. Good afternoon, Paul. Fast am I. Thank you. I thought I'd just start by saying that I, being 61, had my uh, vaccination on Friday and I was taken through the whole thing and it was very clearly made clear to me that there was going to be side effects, potential anyway, and they were given to me very clearly. And I think that's what I want to pass on the good news, that if you know you're going to get these things or potentially, then you're ready for it. So it's quite surprising that people are, are kind of thinking that they're suddenly getting ill. But I, I'm sure you've made that quite clear to everyone, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, people, you know, I've said I've had one myself and um, I felt a little bit miserable at, at the weekend after it, but it went um, back, to, back to normal. So I, I think the, um, the discomfort of, of having the jab is minuscule compared with the what will happen to you if you catch COVID and you haven't been vaccinated. Right. Um, the Madeira vaccine, will that fill the hole that you're expecting when we have these, this sort of short supply issue coming up? And with that, are you getting sign off in advance? Because obviously we remember originally there was all this paperwork that had to be done before you could administer it. So are those in hand? David, do you want to take yeah. that? So in relation to Dota First, it won't fill the gap um, because the gap is basically started. It's the next few weeks where there's actually the reduced number of AstraZeneca. Um, the Moderna will come online around about mid-April. It still has to have the formal marketing authorization process put in place for approval for use. We will still need an indemnity sat around that. Um, the indemnity will probably be a lot quicker this time because, of course, we've got the two examples of AstraZeneca um, and also Pfizer. And we will need the clinical sign off to say that it is fine to um, deliver. So people shouldn't be thinking that's going to suddenly speed everything up anyway. We are, we are actually moving very quickly with our vaccination program now. And as I laid out to Sam there in the answer, once we get two the under 50s then basically we speed up even more so it's not going to disrupt it on the current time scales with or without the Moderna it will still be the middle of May. It's also worth pointing out to you Paul that you can't as you know you can't mix the, the vaccine so you can't say right we can use the Moderna as a second dose because we're short on Pfizer it has to be you know two doses of the Moderna so that's another reason why it's not going to help as, as much as maybe you'd hope. And to make it clear, this sign-off is between the Isle of Man and the United Kingdom, isn't it? Is that what's going to happen? So in terms of the indemnity, it's the UK government um, giving the indemnity to the Isle of Man. So expanding the Crown indemnity to cover the Crown dependencies. That applies to Jersey and Guernsey as well. And then, in then what we will do is we always put through our clinical advisory group um, what we have received in relation to that for their sign-off, that they're happy with that because it is a medical procedure at the end of the day. And from that point then, we are able to administer the vaccine assuming it's got a marketing authorisation. Okay. My second question has come from someone who works on board vessels as an ancillary worker. They're very concerned that obviously all the members of the steam packet have had the vaccinations, but these people who are saying they're mixing with both the Isle of Man staff and the United Kingdom staff haven't been offered the vaccination and feel that this could be potentially still a problematic area in case there is a, another outbreak. Your thoughts? Right. Well, I think our director of public health would better come in on that. I'm not. A, I wasn't aware that um, members of staff on board the ships hadn't been vaccinated. If you're saying that has that, that's the case, Paul. Then I'm sure we can look into it. Doctor Hewitt, can you advise? Yes, this is news to me. Um, I'm not aware of a, a group called ancillary workers who are excluded from the access to the vaccination and indeed the surveillance testing program. I haven't got any more details. It could be a cleaners. I suppose it could be anyone, I suppose, who has access to the boat, who has to do something on it, I'm guessing. That's all. Right. Well, maybe if you want to pass the details on to us, Paul, we can have a look. So, so are you saying this is Isle of Man-based cleaners going on board the ship when it's docked to, to clean it and therefore maybe not coming into contact with crew? Or are they actually working on board the ship whilst it's sailing? Uh, no, it's definitely when they're in in the Isle of Man port. But I'm not saying they're cleaners. I'm just saying they 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 describe themselves as ancillary workers. So I'm I'm thinking what that might mean. That's all. Okay. Well, we can certainly look into it. Um, but if they're not actually on the boat when it sails, that might be the criteria. But yeah, we can we can take that on board. <laughs>